Welcome back. You're still watching Guardians of Gaia, connecting people and planet on channel 263. On our episode today, we're looking at food and farming for the future. Besides devastating hunger, food waste is another consequence of the industrial food system. Did you know that 45% of the available food supply in South Africa is wasted? Let's look at how food gets wasted in the supply system. Food waste. What's the situation? Most people think that food is only wasted at home. When you don't finish your meal. Or when you throw out old food. But no, food waste happens at all stages of the food chain. Take this carrot. During production, crop insects can compromise its development and lead to its loss. Then, at the calibration stage, a carrot can be rejected if it's too small or has an unusual shape compared to the required standards. If the carrot is cut or canned, machines can also damage it or lead to a loss of material. If it sits too long on the supermarket shelf, the vegetable will lose its freshness and won't find a buyer. Finally, even if the carrot makes it into our shopping basket, it may end up in the trash anyway because of a lack of appetite. There are many ways for loss during production and processing and waste during distribution and consumption to occur. In developed countries, food waste usually occurs due to a lack of coordination between the different parts of the food supply chain and consumer behaviour. For example, in restaurants with buffets, it's difficult to predict in advance the exact number, appetite and preference of the customers. Not to mention that they might be tempted to take portions that are too big to finish. In low-income countries, technical limitations and the lack of storage and transport infrastructure are often to blame. For example, sun-dried rice in Asia is particularly vulnerable to rodents and parasites, and if the rice becomes contaminated, it must be thrown away. When you put it all together, all of this uneaten food represents a colossal loss for human nutrition. Imagine, one third of the world's production, about 1.3 billion tonnes of food, is lost or wasted every year. All this loss and waste is problematic on three levels. Firstly, economic. Since purchasing and preparing food that will not be consumed has a cost, both for professionals and consumers. Environmental too, because producing uneaten food wastes resources such as water and emits greenhouse gases. Finally, ethical, because even though reducing food loss and waste will not directly reduce world hunger, decreasing food waste is a moral obligation that we owe to those who lack food. <sighs> to benefit our planet and optimise natural resources, the challenge is to reduce this loss and waste. And the good news is that initiatives are blossoming. Some companies use rejected fruit and vegetables to make soup or jam. Others redistribute unsold food to individuals or charities. Awareness campaigns encourage consumers to adopt simple measures at home, such as cooking with leftovers or using a shopping list to better plan what quantities to buy. However, there is still a long way to go. The whole system must be redesigned, for example, by optimising poor infrastructure, bringing the supply closer to the demand, or even restoring value and meaning to our food. <laughs> we often feel more heartbroken throwing away leftovers from a chicken cooked by our grandmother than throwing away an impersonal store-bought chicken that came wrapped in plastic. In fact, we often waste what is of little value to us. The fight against waste, then, requires a technological response, but also a cultural one and we all have a role to play. If we reduce food waste, we reduce greenhouse gas emissions and the pressure on land and water. Cutting global food waste in half by 2030 is one of the United Nations top priorities, but this is of course only viable if the whole system changes completely. 
So how is civil society facing up to the challenges of counteracting industrial food systems? In September this year, African Social Movement came together to discuss the upcoming United Nations Food Systems Summit. They launched a joint position reacting to the position of the African Union. Let's hear more. Corporate capture of food systems is not new. It's been building up since the 1990s with the introduction of neoliberal policies, privatization, opening markets, withdrawing state support to agriculture in the global south. And of course, with the WTO and the agreement on agriculture, which recast food as a commodity for export rather than a human right. Ces derniers deux décennies, depuis 2007-2008, la crise alimentaire, les mouvements sociaux, la société civile s'est éveillée et elle a même introduit le, la FAO, elle a introduit le, le, le comité et donc il a euh, organisé ce, ce mécanisme actuel dont on parle. Et ça, de toute façon, on n'en veut pas. Les multinationales, les, trans, les, les sociétés transnationales n'en veut pas parce que elle est contre force, contre pouvoir, et elles, elles veulent affaiblir, stopper cette cette avance de ces mouvements sociaux. C'est ça. C'est on comprend un peu ça. On sait très bien que nous sommes dans une situation où il faut s'organiser plus, où il faut parler entre nous plus. Et je disais, je répète toujours que si un continent, une région va faire beaucoup d'efforts, beaucoup plus que les autres, c'est l'Afrique qui devrait le faire. It's important to underline that corporations would never have attained the degree of concentration and power they have without the complicity of government. How is it that our governments can go against their own decisions uh, as exemplified by this so-called common position by the by the African Union regarding the food system summit and this is one key concern that we are that we are um, uh, asking in our common letter to the states uh, our feeling as I as explained in the letter is that there's a small group in the AU that is uh, that is driving this action this position portrays a captured AU tying our futures to the global economy based on extraction, ecocide, inequalities, and exploitation of our peoples and our resources. The key actor in this movement has been the World Economic Forum, which groups the world's most powerful multinationals, along with uh, philanthrocapitalist foundations like Gates. Its recipe for what it calls progress is simple, technological innovation, digitalization, investment, and a narrow concept of science-based knowledge that excludes the wisdom of peasants, women, indigenous peoples. Eu sei. <laughs> yeah. Obrigada, Mateus. Temos visto com preocupação os nossos governos a assinarem memorandos de entendimento, a assinarem acordos com companhias e vindo as nossas comunidades devastando as nossas terras. Primeiro nos expulsam, tiram-nos das nossas terras, das nossas machambas, e nos colocam em zonas sem nenhuma condição de produção alimentar, muitas vezes zonas secas e sem água. Como jovens, nós estamos aqui a chamar atenção aos nossos governos e queremos dizer isto aqui neste, neste encontro, que nós negamos e denunciamos estas, estes acordos e estes posicionamentos que os, chefe, que os chefes de Estado africanos e os governos têm estado a fazer, porque para mim não nos representam. All small-scale food producers, including indigenous peoples, women, and workers, continue to be marginalized and excluded from decision-making processes in their countries. But what they call public uh, participation by citizens, we actually call it cherry-picking participation by those invited by the government and corporations. It is through this system of cherry picking participation that has sold our heritage, our land, our national resources, and our souls to corporations.
You're tuned in to Guardians of Gaia, connecting people and planet on Cape Town TV, discussing food and farming for the future. When we come back, we will hear from South Africans about the importance of a sustainable food system for nutrition and health. 